Our focus on Sri Lanka continues. Meanwhile, they have uh, a new government in place. This is something we've highlighted, both during the presidential election and in the aftermath. When it comes to the issue of human rights, the Rajapaksas have a dodgy record. So the primary challenge for the new president, Gotabaya Rajapaksa, was to work on his image. He seems to be progressing in the opposite direction, though. The government is targeting critics, and barely two weeks in office, they're locked in a major diplomatic spat with Switzerland. Let me give you a quick background. November 17th, Gotabaya Rajapaksa won the presidential election. A few days later, on the 25th of November, an employee of the Swiss embassy in Sri Lanka was detained and threatened. The reason? A top Sri Lankan police officer, Nishanta De Silva, investigated human rights violations during the Mahinda Rajapaksa tenure, the previous tenure. Soon after the elections, Nishanta De Silva fled to Switzerland and he sought asylum there. Swiss authorities say that the forced detention of its embassy official was related to the asylum of Nishanta de Silva. Now this is like the Rashomon effect. Both the sides, Sri Lanka and Switzerland, have different versions of the events. First to the Swiss version. Switzerland says that unidentified men tried to force the woman official in their embassy to disclose confidential and sensitive information. She was forced to unlock her phone, and reveal the names of Sri Lankans who had sought asylum in Switzerland. The detention was unlawful. This incident took place on the streets of Colombo and the employee was threatened. This is the Swiss version, as I said. Switzerland wants a detailed probe into the matter and a guarantee from Sri Lanka on the safety of its embassy officials. Now to the Sri Lankan view of the matter. First, media reports in Sri Lanka denied the incident altogether. Then Sri Lanka raised doubts on the claims by the Swiss embassy. Sri Lanka says that the sequence of events and the timeline of the detention did not match the movements of the Swiss embassy employee on that particular day. They're challenging her version. The government is citing movements tracked by GPS, Uber records and CCTV footage to make that point. Sri Lanka's foreign ministry wants the employee to be interviewed and medically examined. But Switzerland, in turn, has summoned the Sri Lankan ambassador. The Swiss government does not want this employee to be questioned by Sri Lanka, and they are citing health grounds for this. And while all of these events were unfolding, the Sri Lankan government took another major decision. It alerted airport immigration authorities to stop any police officer, Sri Lankan police officer, leaving the country without permission. Now, if the Sri Lankan government is in the clear, why would it stop people from leaving the country? And not just any people, more than 700 police officials, they have been barred. Is it right to force an embassy official of another country to reveal sensitive information? Is the Sri Lankan government worried about something that Nishanta De Silva knew? All these questions have come to the fore now. This incident also has eerie parallels to many events at the fag end of the civil war. Then too, critics were targeted. Members of rights groups like Human Rights Watch were threatened to leave Sri Lanka. Some dissenting voices disappeared altogether. Now Sri Lanka needs to investigate and disclose the nature of information that was sought from the embassy official. That would clear the air. In the middle of this whole episode, Sri Lanka has also suspended its parliament ahead of the snap polls. So the legislature has been prorogued overnight and this will give the Rajapaksa government a larger say. It will minimize the role of the parliamentary committees in the day-to-day -day affairs. Several anti-establishment media houses have been raided in Sri Lanka. In simple words, power in the country is getting centralized into, into the hands of one family. Dissenters live in an environment of fear. And not just dissenters, but even officials working for the embassies of other countries, they are living in fear. And that's not a good sign for rights and democracy in the island nation.